So we need to talk about the election. And as you know, I'm not really into the whole raw politics thing. I spend a lot more time here on this channel talking about culture because I think that's in a lot of ways more important. And I think that the politics is, is very much downstream of that. But uh, we do have the election coming up very soon. And there are some things that I hear in, in crowds of my own uh, that I think I'd like to address. So I won't waste your time. I'll start off by saying I think that, of course, of the two options that are on the table, Trump is the better candidate. Um, that's not a contest. I think from there, you have a lot of people who just kind of say, OK, so he's the better candidate, but is he good enough, morally speaking, for me to vote for him? And I think that's where we get into like a much more, I think, interesting discussion, because I mean, when you look at uh, Kamala Harris, like abortion has become her principal topic. I think what's fascinating about that is that it's not so much reflective just of her, but merely of the broader society that we're in, such that um, the the ability to kill your child uh, could become the the prime topic for for anyone, let alone for more than half the country, which is what she's aiming for, um, essentially. So it's it's just like, I think that when we talk, that's why I like to spend so much time talking about culture, because it's like the fact that you have one bad politician or a lot of bad politicians is less interesting, I guess, um, and less important in a certain sense than the fact that you have so many people in the society itself who would support that individual. Because if, if the society was not inclined towards that immorality, then the politician wouldn't be elected and therefore it would be a non-issue. And so that's what I mean um, when I say that. And so, yeah, you know, you see all of her ads, or at least I, I, I seem to, I've seen very few Trump ads, but I've seen plenty of, of Kamala ads that are all veered around this whole uh, abortion issue. That is the topic um, that she's put herself behind and that she expects to win support through, which is uh, horrifying um, in terms of the fact that she expects that to uh, work and that she, and most people seem to think it's going to be a relatively close race. You know, it won't be like 90-10. Um, and that's, that's horrifying in itself. I do think that, and this is where we're going to get into the sort of more nuanced uh, discussion about Trump, like, I still think that we're on a cultural downward slope, including uh, with Trump. So, yes, I think he's the better of the options. Um, I still don't think that he's this, you know, great moral figure. And I know that there are a lot of people, um, including like Catholics and Orthodox, a lot of whom watch this channel, and that's why I'm making this, um, who would just sort of disavow him, especially after he did the whole thing in relation to the Florida law, in which he said that, you know, six weeks was too soon, you know, in regards to abortion and that, you know, they should be able to abort their kids later on in the pregnancy and that kind of thing. Uh, that alienated a lot of people and I completely understand that. Um, I mean, ideally, like I would want a pro-life uh, candidate, obviously, that protected life from conception until natural death. Um, unfortunately, that's just, that's not something that we currently have. Um, when it comes to this, like, morality itself, I think that that's, I mean, morality is based in something. It has to be rooted in something. And because we have a culture right now that is really rejecting religion, because even, even if you have, you take a, like, raw statistical approach to this topic and say, well, you know, we've got this percentage of people who call themselves Christians. It's like, yes, but do they live as it? You know, and do they actually want candidates that reflect it? You know, and, and it's in those questions where things get, get a lot more muddy. And I think that when you look societally and you see in things like the way that COVID was handled on like a, a mass basis, people will will accept the secular far more than they will accept the religious, which is to say that we're becoming a much more secular society. And that's going to be reflected in uh, the moral decisions that come you know, thereafter. So in other words, if we eradicate religion from society, you will over time eradicate morality uh, from it as well. You'll have a very different understanding, a sort of different ethical distribution that won't line up um, with what is true and what is good. Um, so that's what we have that's going on in that regard. And 
if you, it, I mean, when you're there's a there's a hierarchy of moral evil. Like some some acts are worse than others. Um, and like Catholic moral theology, we talk about the non-negotiables when it comes to um, voting for someone, and you you can't vote in support of um, the non-negotiables. And those would be abortion, human cloning, euthanasia, which would include like assisted suicide, that kind of stuff, uh, embryonic stem cell research, and the redefinition of marriage. Um, and so when you look at our two candidates now, like you don't have um, a a perfect system. Like if, if one of them like was uh, completely, you know, anti-abortion completely, it's, it's a little simpler. But right now what you have is to say, okay, so what's the greatest good that I can do? I don't like the, I don't like the uh, use of the phrase, the lesser of evils, because it, it makes it sound like we're choosing, um, we're choosing something for its evil. And I, I'm not, and hopefully you're not either, but you're choosing something for the highest good that can be achieved. And I think that's a better way of uh, phrasing it that's more clear. Like if I were to uh, vote for Trump because he's supported abortion at six weeks, that would be an evil act. If I were to support Trump because, you know, he's allowing kids to, in the womb to live for a lot longer than Harris is, that's a very different thing, right? And so that's what I mean by the difference between the lesser of two evils versus aiming for the highest good. And I think it's mirrored in our own lives in that because we live in a fallen world, we rarely have a perfect answer to the moral questions that we face in our personal lives. We end up instead having to do the best that we can and to aim for the highest good that is before us. And I think that that's the sort of situation that we're in with regards to this. Um, outside of this election, you know, so I think, I've, I mean, that's, that's pretty much all I'm going to say on the topic. I think that it's I think it's obvious in that regard that you know the highest good that you can do um, with the candidates that we have is is obviously uh, to go for Donald Trump. Now, outside of this election, though, I do think that we have a problem when people, and I hear this from a lot of Republicans who are sort of I guess justifying um, their vote for Trump, and they'll say something to the effect of, "Well, I don't want my." politician to be my churchman, my pastor, my priest, uh, let's say that in different ways, or, the, or I don't want him to be the Pope or something like that. And I think that we have a, a problem there in which I have to say, like, what, why not? Why would we not want the political figure that we elect for the highest office in the country to be someone who is moral? And like, yeah, including someone who has a religious backbone, someone who is actually Christian. As in like, I mean, it used to be kind of a given, like a person wouldn't get elected if they didn't say that they were Christian, right? Um, so that's not a, a particularly new idea. And no, I'm not talking about, you know, having, <laughs> have, having the actual Pope in America. That's not what I'm talking about. But I am saying that I think that there's a problem when we're trying to so divorce um, religion from the political sphere altogether, because when you do so, as I mentioned earlier, you're, re you're removing morality itself. And man is an inherently religious creature, and he is. We've always had um, religion because of who we are and how we were made. And so in every culture, you'll find these, you can call them passions, if you like, these great loves, these things of worship. And they inform everything about how we act and how we feel and how we make the decisions that we do. Why would I not care about that in the person that I elect? It's, it's befuddling to me. Like, it's one thing to say, okay, so this guy is the best option of the two options that I have. And therefore, I'm aiming for the highest good. And therefore, I'm, I'm voting for this person. Like, obviously, I get that. Um, but I think it's a different thing to say, well, I don't need to, to vote. For, I don't need my president to be my churchman. Like, would it be so bad if he were a moral figure? W would it be so bad if he had, you know, if it was actually something that was inspirational and, um, you know, was willing to sacrifice and do what was necessary to choose the highest good himself and to be, like, educated in the things that matter himself? And, you know, like, I, I don't, I, I don't see a negative there. And I think that we're a little too comfortable with the idea that we don't need the person who is in this position to be moral. 
And I think that's a consequence of the fact that we're accepting a sort of immorality all around us as we have the descent of culture. I don't think it's a good trade-off. Um, but obviously, when you have a president of a nation, he's um, th that's elected through some kind of a democratic process. You know, I realize this is a republic, but you still do have a democratic element to it. Um, whenever you have that, you're going to have um, that person who is elected to be representative in some sense of the the broader culture. Um, and therein lies the problem, because we have such uh, cultural decay. I mean, you've had other um, populaces throughout history in which you have a sort of like top down conversion. In fact, that was, I think, far more common was to, you know, sort of convert the king and you convert the culture. Um, but in this sort of a society that can happen. And so now you sort of you end up with a culmination of the immorality of the group. And so that is that is where we are. And that is what to sort of push back against. It's why I, I spend so much time talking about the, the cultural war that we're in, which is very much a spiritual war because you can't separate culture, morality, and religion. Um, they're so integral to one another. All right, I think I have gone on uh, for long enough, but I thought, I, I, I thought those things were certainly worth sharing and worth thinking about because it's like, again, like for me, it's like, no, I actually would prefer that the president of the United States be a moral, well-informed uh, body who cares about the Christian faith and, you know, wishes to take those moral messages and, and enact them. That, that yeah, I, I would prefer that. Um, and But as with every area um, of my life, I try and choose um, the highest good that I can. I think that's what we, that's what we have to do.